Welcome back to the Millennial Farmer. I got the air compressor draining. It's good to drain the moisture out of your air compressor every once in a while. It gets that moisture out of the bottom. It's better for your power tools. Plus, if you're mounting race car tires, you don't want moisture in there because then they grow as they build heat. But for right now, the important thing is this red Kenworth, which is now red instead of pink. We buffed this. I've got plans for the tanks, the mirrors, the grill. But today, I want to get the wheels and tires off these things so that we can polish these aluminum wheels. Because these ones are old and ugly and wrinkly. So we got to fix that. First, I think I'll go wash my face in the deep sink. I think I got it. How's that look? There's your secret. I got a screen above the lens that I can see what I'm doing. We only have one load of soybeans left to go out, so we're not gonna need that tractor and grain cart over there anymore, so I may as well hook the snowblower back up onto this. I had a lot of people asking in one of my most recent videos why us silly Americans run these quick hitches. Well, that's why, right there, simple. Simple as that. Hey, Didge. I want to move that truck over into the main bay here because I've only got a 50 foot hose for a, for a big air hose to get the wheels off that truck. So I gotta kind of shuffle things around. Are you kidding me? Those are brand new batteries. This truck has only started one time on those batteries and that charger has been on 10 amps for 24 hours. Which means I either have a really bad draw or those batteries are garbage. Or that starter is garbage. That, holy crap, I can't believe it. I am legitimately wondering if I will never get this truck started on those batteries. I'm gonna have to get, I, I, I'm, a little annoyed. I switched it to a different battery and put it on 30 amps, so we'll see if I give it some time there, but I am really annoyed by that. As I mentioned, I have to get it moved to get those wheels off because I only have one connection with a 50 foot hose, so it's got to go in the main bay to get those off. And I told the shop I was bringing the wheels tomorrow morning, so I have to get that done. It's uh, almost four o'clock. I guess I'll let that charge while I clear a little bit more snow over here. The electrician did come out and we got this door going. Because again, as you saw in a previous video, I screwed something up over here and I couldn't open the door last time. <laughs> 30 years of experience and 18,000 doors behind this thing. I'm pretty confident she's solid. Let's see if the trucks in here start. I really have my doubts about that one back there, but I'm thinking this one might go. It's 25, 30 degrees out here. It might go. Been sitting for probably three weeks, so hopefully it fires up. Come on. It wants to. Not gonna go. We've got plenty of juice, but it's just too cold for it, I guess. This one's usually pretty good, but I've only got one outlet in this whole shed as of this point it's way over there so i need about 100 feet of cord to plug it in put a charger on it and then it'll fire tomorrow i'll let it sit but first i need to get the other one started and moved over that's the main concern these two i want to get in the heated shop so we can kind of start going through them because we are going to start hauling a bunch of corn out here in the next couple of weeks hey bruce zach johnson how's it going Hey, I got a question for you. I'm looking for some Napa Gold batteries, but I need the big ones for a semi truck. Yep. Um, how big or how good can I get in a cold cranking amp for those? 950 cold cranking. Yeah, can you get them stronger than that? 1125. How long would it take you to get uh, three or four of those? Got some high dollar batteries coming tomorrow. I'm taking these things out because this thing wasn't this bad with the old batteries. 
Oh my gosh, I better never shut this thing off again. Now being honest and up front with you guys, those are Econo Power batteries. I got them from a guy uptown that jockeys batteries. They're, they're like a second, they're an interstate second battery. I'm told they're an older battery. So I know I wasn't buying a super high quality battery, but that's on purpose because I can never get even the high quality ones to last very long. And I don't know what the CCA rating is of those ones. They weren't very expensive. I'm not upset about it. I'm just mildly annoyed. It is what it is. Thick. That's a thick rubber, boy. That's how the kids would say it, right? It does look nicer now, doesn't it? I seriously only had to move it like 40 feet, but that's all the hose I've got, so it had to be done. I like that better. This jack's got a sweet uh, safety pin like that. You can set it right down on there. I like it. Let me get on there before I do that. Size a little different. Back the other way. Kind of glad I didn't turn the heat up in here. I should probably get some new caps here, but I don't know if they'll stay on. I've put new ones on a couple times and half of them fall off right away. Onyx came in to take the ranger out and do some deer scouting anyway. He's done with school now, so I may as well load these up. It gets dark so early here in the winter time. Ugh. All right, let's see if we can get those steer tires off now and be done with this. Yep. I like that a lot better. I have beat the tar out of that thing with that sledgehammer as much as I possibly have in me. So I've, I've devised a new plan here. I don't know if it's gonna work, but you guys get to at least enjoy it with me. I've never tried this move before. Never had one this bad. Safety glasses, four wheel drive, Low gear. Try a little more snort. I really thought that would work. Holy crap. 
crap. Everything was going relatively decent here. For my next trick, Four wheeler's pretty light. This skid loader's got to weigh three, four hundred pounds. That's a joke. Boy. That is fiddle string. For the next one to go a lot easier than this one. This right side steer tire basically fell right off. As soon as the nuts were loose, it came right off. So I'm good to go. We're golden. It suddenly feels quite chilly out here. Kind of forgot I had this other door open over here. I guess I'll get to these other trucks later. Not tonight, it's past supper time. Check this out, I brought my own lighting crew. Pretty sweet, huh? I'm moving up in this whole acting gig. A little breezy out here now. Okay, we'll see you guys in the morning. Morning. Rambler Trucking, Albany, Minnesota. I've never been here, certainly heard of the place because we're only about an hour away, but what I can tell you is Joey, who I've never met, reached out to me, said, hey, we got a wheel polisher that will polish those things with the tires on. You bring them here, we'll take care of it. So I'm gonna run in, they got two buildings here, at least, run in and see where they want me to go. Back into door 17, I'm told. It's a nice, clean, easy to see mirror. That's just what you wanted, right? Yeah. So that's after the first wheel. You must have just switched the switched the wheels. Yep, that was 280. Now we go to 320 grit. Look at that. I don't know if you could tell the difference between those two wheels or not, but I'm pretty excited to see what the whole set looks like on the truck. They're gonna hook me, hook me up with some uh, plastic caps, some better, like the little plastic nut caps that go over them. Uh, they're gonna hook me up with some of those and maybe a set of headlights because I'd like to put some better headlights on that thing. One piece at a time, but I'm pretty pumped. I'm out of here for now, but it sounds like they'll be finished with those today. I'll swing back here tomorrow morning, pick those up, get them on the truck. Wow. Morning, Kenty. <laughs> Good morning. I got a whole back seat, well, and a, and a box full of goods for this truck. We got some chrome covers to put on the center of the wheels, those center caps. I got new headlights for it. I did have to buy a brand new torque wrench. I got a torque wrench now that goes to 600 pounds. Didn't have one of those before. Morning, Anna. You were sleeping when I left. You're up now. Time to get this baby all beautified. Just gotta get the Malibu out of the way. These things look sweet. They are going to be real nice on that. Real nice. Usually like two of the, of the jug products. It's been one of those, uh, one of those times, one of those moments, the last couple hours here. It's been two hours now since I unloaded those wheels right there. Kent was out here, he was going to help me out, just a buddy of mine, he doesn't work on Fridays, and 
he likes to stay busy. So he was going to help me out, but he had to take off. I had an agronomist swing by. That took an hour. And I was on the phone with a guy. Uh, it sounds like we are going to have a new uh, spray trailer built, a water trailer. So working on that. But the first thing I need to do here is clean these hubs up. These need to be nice and clean. The studs got to be nice and clean. We got to make sure everything's aligned on here. And that's going to be a messy job. I'm pretty sure this left front is the worst. I did chip away at it a little bit, but I got a wire wheel. They gave me some alignment nuts to uh, start with, so we'll get to work here. I think I got them cleaned up enough to get these going on there. We'll see how easy or how difficult it is to align them. Hopefully that jack works well for me and I'll be able to get the height easy enough. No, I'm not gonna let me. Okay, I guess the camera's gonna stay there because I can't let go of this tire. All right, I'm started on the studs there. Now I was told not to use my big one inch impact right there with the air. Just use my three quarter inch battery powered because you don't want to over torque any of these. So I'll put it on here, and draw things, draw things up first. I need to add that this is absolutely not a how to video. I'm not a heavy truck mechanic really don't know what I'm doing. I'm a farmer and I'm just figuring it out. So this is not a how-to video. If you really want to know how to do something correctly, you could probably check the comments for all the people that uh, are professionals in the industry. Or at least they know how to sound like it on the internet. These three nuts that I put on here, these nuts right here, they've got a, an extra little flange underneath that helps to center the wheel on that hub. Those are my regular nuts. Now that I've got the three on here and it's centered, I'll start running my regular nuts up. That way, everything is centered just right. At least that's the idea. Because if you're way off, your front end's gonna ride like this, and then damage happens. Is this the first one? This is the first one, yeah. How long have you been on it? On this one? Yeah. Not long, but I had an agronomist out here for an hour and a phone call that took 40 minutes. Oh. This didn't take me too long. You like the new impact? Yeah, it's heavy. <laughs> Wheel one is snugged up. Get the jack out from underneath there. I still gotta torque that and then put the cap on, check tire pressure as long as I'm messing with it. High edge. 500 foot pounds is what I'm told to torque these two. So I went around once in the star pattern. Just gonna double check them all now. Maybe I missed that one. Why you do it twice. Now for the little luxury accessory here. I mentioned that D's nut covers kept falling off all the time. So now, now we got a whole kit, a whole fake shiny kit. Do you see how disgusting that is compared to this wheel? We're gonna fix that. A little bit of thread in there to grab onto the stud, the wheel stud. And then you use this very specific handy dandy little tool. And you don't overdo it because they're plastic and you'll break them. And then you just drive up to the neighbor's yard and you're like, hey, I don't know if you notice or not, but I'm building the show truck. Woo! That is too nice to drive on our sloppy roads this time of year. But we're still gonna have to do it like next week. We gotta. We're gonna start hauling right away. Shoot. The front's turned out pretty nice, but that was kind of a lot of work. So I think for the back, I'll do it the easy way since 
since I'm on an, uh, like a movie set here and I can do things the easy way, pull some camera tricks. The wheels look good. However, I can't make my handy dandy little kit work, which is disappointing. I'll have to look and see if there's another kit out there that I could acquire. Shoot. Side two is now also done. Same uh, situation. I really wish these center caps would work on the back, but unfortunately with our hubs and the nut kit the way that it is around there, those just aren't gonna work. I am talking with Rambler to look into some other options. There's some other things that we could maybe do there to do something, cover the ugliness up, but uh, for now this is this looks a heck of a lot better than it did. So I'm gonna get this thing down and torque these back wheels. I tell you what, four wheels with this thing seems like a lot. I got two to go. This is a lot of work. It's a big wrench. You would think it'd be a little easier, but it takes it takes a little strength. That's a fair amount of work. Got that done. Got my mess picked up. You got to go around each wheel twice. There's 10 lugs on each. That's 20 times around. That's 120 times with that wrench. That's that's a that's a mild workout. Up next. I got some new LED headlights that are supposed to be plug and play. I'm hoping they are, because it's already a lot later in the day than I wanted it to be by this point, which is not uncommon. It happens all the time. I've changed headlights before, but never on one of these trucks, so let's see what this consists of. It can't be too tough. I've said that before. There's a high beam and a low beam on each side. So we got four of these things. I'll try not to mix them up. Oh, this can't be too difficult, except things appear to be pretty rusted in. Oh, don't do that, don't do that. Oh, that's what I mean. This one moved, that one didn't, that one didn't. See, things that are easily plug and play devices, maybe the devices work fine, but everything else here, well, before I break bolts off, Figured I'd go take a look at this. So how how the heck does this one mount in then? Because it doesn't have the same. Nothing's the same. I guess I'll just uh, keep pulling things apart. Because these little screws come out. The big ones adjust the up and down. I can see that. So maybe I was going about this all wrong. Oh, oh okay. All right. You idiot, Zach. Now I got it. It's just a cover. It's not a part of the bulb. Not on my shiny truck. And I figured out the way to tell them apart. So there's a two prong and a three prong. So as long as you remember which one came out of where, because it looks like they're the same back here. You know what? I'm going to spray some stuff in there. This was a gift from Tim. Thanks, Tim. Not a sponsor, by the way. Just. Tim's a buddy and said, here, try this on all your sensor connections. I got them in there, but before I put the bezel on the outside, let's see if this thing's got any battery left in it. Which, by the way, I have the new batteries for it over there. They were much more expensive than these ones. So, they're gonna go in here. I don't know if that'll be tonight or not. So there's juice there. Let's see what we got. There's the old low beam. There's the new low beam. Obviously, can't tell anything in here. But it works and it's supposed to be better. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with that. We'll check the high beam. Are you ladies impressed? Yeah, I can tell. Oh, look at that. Side two. There we go. As expected, the first side takes 15 to 20 minutes. The second side takes about five. As with most things. There's a burden here and Didge is pretty pumped about it. She'll never catch it, but she's pumped about it, and Anna doesn't know what's going on. She just follows Didge around, because that's her buddy. Didge is on the lookout, and Anna, Anna's lost. Now, for my next trick, and probably my final one of the day, I'm gonna get these cheap sons of guns out of here and swap them out, clean all the connections really well, check the cables, maybe pull the protective, these stupid rubber ends, because I think they're just allowing more corrosion to go on inside there. 
Maybe clean up some of this. I don't know, we'll see where my motivation level's at once I really get in there. And just to really solidify my decision here, I did try to start it and it turns over, but not really. Now someone way smarter than me, somebody way more electrical than me, tell me why this would be. We got three batteries obviously in tandem here, in triple. This one is hot, hot. Like I just tried starting it one time, it cranked over really hard. This stud right here is hot. This one is not really warm. This one's cold. Is there something to that? Is there a... It doesn't matter right now, because by the time you see this, I'm gonna have these swapped out and be moving on with life, but what's happening there? Why is it, why is it, I mean, is that normal? Maybe that's normal, maybe there's no issues. But it's like it put all the power into one battery and not the other one. Which would be what it acts like, I guess. It's starting to seem like I do this all the time. Cut that stupid rubber thing off there. It's thick. She thick boy. This is probably riveting entertainment. Got that rubber boot off. Actually wasn't really corroded under there, but this is maybe. And that's very possibly my issue there. And they're probably all like that. Everything is reconnected here with the new batteries. Cleaned up all the ends, uh, sprayed this contact enhancer stuff on them all. I don't wanna take these apart because right now I'm not that confident in those not breaking. Ideally, they should obviously be cleaned up, but I'm not going to mess with that right now. I do have a starter for this thing. If uh, the batteries and the starter don't work, don't seem to be enough, then I will put some new cables on it, but uh, Let's see if these batteries will fire it up. Huh. Night and day difference, not even comparable. And there's no way those batteries are fully charged right now. Ideally, I should leave a low voltage charger on them all night long, but I'm gonna have to get out of here. Of course, I gotta leave town tonight, so. But that's not even close. I mean, they fired right up. I keep forgetting to mention the obvious, but uh, I am gonna have Jim come out here and help me test for draws on this thing. He's a lot better with electrical stuff than I am, so. He's a lot better at everything than I am, but particularly with electrical. So if he can help me find a draw on this thing, maybe we'll have something there, but right now I'm confident these batteries aren't upgraded. Doesn't mean it will start tomorrow after it sits, but I didn't make anything worse. I gotta take it for a, a rip around the block. I'll try not to get it dirty, but I gotta see what these headlights look like, even though it's not fully dark yet by any means. Oh, you can tell a big difference in these wheels. Actually, I can tell a big difference in those headlights. I'm going to back up and adjust one of those low beams for sure. I definitely screwed up that adjustment on that low beam. A Little bit icy out here for a truck in general, but especially one without a trailer. Got my diff lock set on, so Hopefully I'll make it back, but these headlights, I think there's gonna be a big improvement here. Still not quite dark enough to tell, but I think they're good. Well, I couldn't stop in time to make the driveway, but I'm not in the ditch. That's a dramatic improvement. I like it. This pleases me. That's it for today. Okay, bye. <laughs>